Hi, this is Dan Bird from Funky Punk Music. Every now and again, a parent will ask us, I'm not a musician, I'm not a guitarist, how can I help and support my child in their practicing the guitar at home? Well, we do appreciate if you don't play the guitar, you're not a musician, it might all be a bit daunting. So here's a video just for you to explain some of the basics of playing the guitar, some of the jargon we use, and the expectations that we, as Funky Punk Music, have got for your child practicing the guitar at home. First of all, thanks for letting us teach your child. We do appreciate the investment you're making in your child's musical development, and uh, we hope they're enjoying the lessons as well. Our ethos in Funky Punk is putting the fun back into music, and I guess that stems from the fact that when I was young, music lessons were not particularly enjoyable and not a lot of fun. We believe enjoyment is the main reason for learning a musical instrument, even more than achievement. So our responsibility at Funky Punk is to make sure our lessons are fun, enjoyable, educational, stimulating, inspirational. We want your children to look forward to their guitar lesson at school each week. And we hope to be able to help you as a parent to support your child in practicing at home. We do ask for half an hour practice a week, any less than that, and they're not gonna be progressing quite as quickly as we'd like in learning the material that we're going over. We do find often that if you try and make your children practice every day, it can become a little bit onerous for you and for them, and eventually become something that they don't enjoy doing anymore. If you're able to get every day practicing, brilliant, but, um, but please just even half an hour a week in one sitting or two lots of 15 minutes would be absolutely sufficient for uh, going over the material that we've been learning in the lesson. Okay, so the guitar itself, this is a right-handed guitar. Now, even people who are left-handed that are absolute beginners, we suggest learning the guitar right-handed. Two main reasons for that. One is there's no real benefit in learning left-handed or right-handed. Uh, you don't get left-handed pianos or left-handed trombones, do you? Um, both hands are needed for guitar uh, equally. So, um, so no real benefit in learning it one way or the other. Um, and the other thing is the availability of left-handed guitars is so poor that even now or five or 10 years time, if you or your child go to buy a guitar from a shop, you'll find that out of 100 guitars, only three or four will be left-handed uh, and the choice is very limited. Also, if they're at cub camp, sat around the, the uh, campfire and somebody gives your child a guitar to play a song, then that will almost always be a right-handed guitar. So unless you have very strong feelings about it, we always recommend learning right-handed um, just for those kind of reasons, really. Okay, the guitar's got six strings. The strings have got names. You'll see these written down every now and again. It's not the most important thing that your child learns the names of the strings, uh, as you'll see, but this is the big E string at the top. We call it the big E string. It's the biggest string, and it's the lowest string, even though it's at the top of the guitar. Here it is. The next string is the A string. Then we have the D string, followed by G, then B, and at the bottom we have the highest string, which is the little E string. Now this can be a source of confusion, so let me clarify this. This is the big E string, as we call it, because it's the biggest string. It's at the top of the guitar as you look at it, but it's the lowest note on the guitar. And down the bottom, as we look at the guitar, we've got the highest string, the little E string, because it's the thinnest string. So it's the highest string, but physically we say it's at the bottom as you're looking at the guitar, okay? Next, these lines on the front of the guitar are called frets. Now, as far as we're concerned from this point onwards, a fret is the space 
behind the line. This is fret one, fret two, fret three, fret four, and fret five. Fret five will often either have a dot on the front, or in this case, there's one on the top of the guitar as you're looking down on it. So fret five's got a dot, fret seven, fret nine, and then fret 12 often has two dots there. We'll be mainly concerned with the first three frets. So six strings, three frets. Now, fingers and thumb. When you uh, pick up an object, we often say to children, you use your thumb and your fingers to squeeze and oppose each other. That's what we're looking for when we play the guitar. Thumb at the back, pointing up. Fingers on the front, nice and pointy. Now we don't want to be able to see the thumb. It should be behind those fingers. The thumb should never be down here. It should never be over the top. And it shouldn't be sideways particularly either. It wants to be pointing upwards at the back, squeezing against the fingers. The fingers themselves shouldn't be flat, but should be pointy. So we're using the fingertips rather than flat fingers. That way, the fingers will touch only the strings they're meant to touch, which will give us a much better sound. So thumb pointing upwards at the back, fingers pointy on the strings at the front, squeezing against each other. And here's a chord that we often learn near the beginning, a chord being two or three or more notes played at the same time. Our first finger goes on the second string from the top, that's the A string, in the second fret. The second finger goes on the string underneath that, that's the third string down from the top, both in the second fret, both between those two lines. Thumb at the back, squeezing, fingers at the front nice and pointy. And we'll strum that four times. Two, three, four strums. Now you'll see I'm using my thumb to strum the strings. You could use a plectrum. You could use your fingernail. Doesn't really matter, whatever's convenient and comfortable. Okay, so strings, frets, fingers, chords. There are other things we'll learn on the guitar, but I will explain those in future videos. Please, if I can encourage you to sit with your child for at least half an hour a week or listen to them whilst they're practicing. We often say sit at the kitchen table if you've got one, get the sheet in front of you on the table and uh, sit at a chair nice and comfortably, sat upright. If they haven't got a strap on their guitar, that would be a really helpful thing. A strap enables us to be able to hold the guitar without having to use these hands to support it, which means these hands can be used to play the guitar rather than supporting it physically. So if you need a strap on the guitar, we're more than happy to do that. It's 10 pounds to supply a strap and to fit the buttons which screw into the guitar at either end. Uh, we can do that for you. Um, it doesn't take very long. Um, if you need any other help at all, or have got any thoughts or suggestions, um, then please do contact us by email, which is office at funkypunk.org.uk. Thanks so much.